Brothers and sisters, there's a priest by the name of Father Greg Malovitz. He tells the story of being on vacation while riding the elevator. The door opened, a few people walked inside, including a young father holding tight to a car seat containing a sleeping baby. This young father kept looking down to check to see if the baby was still there, tightening his grip on the car seat each time he peeked. His smiling face let everyone know this was a brand new dad, and it was his first child. The mom was downstairs at the pool, and so he was in charge. The elevator came to his floor. When the young father left with the baby, an older gentleman standing next to the priest had his far-off look in his face as if he were deep in memory, and then spoke to the priest and said, I remember that smile, and I remember that grip. We have a father in today's gospel, Jairus. He's desperate. His little girl is sick and is dying back at home. Now it's not hard to imagine then as Jairus made his journey to make the request to our Lord Jesus what might have been running around in his head. How many smiles did his daughter give to him? How much joy has she been in his life? And now there's a very real possibility that that joy be taken away. There's something else to consider. As a father, Jairus must have often held the hand of his daughter, believing that he could guide and protect her as any good father would do. But now he's losing his grip as he realized he could not save his daughter. But in losing his grip, he was losing himself. He would soon come to realize that the hand of Jesus was the only hand to save them both. As disciples, and we are disciples if we truly are trying to follow our Lord, we will come to find our true selves in Jesus. That's where your true self is. Because the meaning of our lives is not found in what we have, but in whose hands our lives are in. Now it's very true. In our journey through life, we can lose our way from our Lord Jesus many times because we lose the grip that we have on him. But you see, that's the problem. We seem to think that so much is dependent on us. We have to be the one to hold on. We have to be the one to summon Jesus. That's simply not the case. Yes, in response to Jesus' invitation to come closer to him, we do have to make the journey like Jairus did to go to Jesus. In our case, that's called what, guys? Coming to church, okay? But once we allow him to take us, all of us, into his hands, he's not the one who's going to let go. Guys, we're talking about what? The hands of God. God is not going to let go of you. No, we are the ones who wriggle free through his hands and his fingers because of our selfishness, because of our insistence on doing what we want to do because of our sins. But what does Jesus say directly to Jairus' daughter? What did he say to him in a certain sense, and even to all of us here today? Talitha kum, child, I say to you, arise. Jesus is telling us to get up, arise. That's pretty much, in a nutshell, the entirety of the gospel message. Letting Jesus pick us up, raise us up. How do you suppose Jesus saves saves us when we get right down to it? By stooping all the way down to us in order to pick us up. Pick us up out of our darkness, out of our confusion, up and out of our brokenness. And when he does pick us up, How far does Jesus need to lift us up? All the way to heaven. That's why he's the only one who can do this. And even though we don't really think about it much, we should, but a lot of us don't, if you pinned someone down and asked them, pretty much everybody would say the same thing. That, yeah, I would like to go to heaven one day. Now, though a great majority of people these days just naturally assume that they're going to make it. All of us are going to make it. How do you suppose we're going to get there? 
We have to be very, very humble. Jairus was a synagogue official, someone who was used to being kind of a big shot, and someone who had to show a great amount of humility and bowing before Jesus and asking him to come and save his daughter. But Jairus also did what Jesus told him to do on the way. Do not be afraid, just have faith. This turned out to be very important for what did he and our Lord encounter once they got back to the house? Wailing and crying and all this commotion because the child was dead. Again, can you imagine what Jairus must have thought? Here our Lord had told him to have faith. When he gets back to the house, everyone's all broken up because she has supposedly died. What was the point? What was the use of having faith? This is how things are going to turn out. But what did our Lord say that confirmed even the little faith that Jairus still had left? This child is not dead, but asleep. Many of you are doing well in your faith journey. You really are in your life with God. With the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you're very much alive, spiritually speaking. But for some of you, yeah, we've got to be honest, but there's no shame in this. For some of you, you barely have a pulse, spiritually speaking. But Jesus will still say to you, directly to you, this child is not dead, but asleep. Then Jesus will tell you to arise. The little girl in our gospel got up and started walking around. And our Lord told the family that she should be given something to eat. This has meaning on a couple of different levels. First, pretty sharp people in front of me here. Okay, I'm sure you guys got some intelligence here, okay? I think you might have noticed this before. Dead people don't eat. Did you ever notice that? Okay? This is what our Lord himself would do when he rose from the dead and came to visit the apostles. He had something to eat with them. Eating was the proof that the daughter was fully alive. But this also has meaning spiritually. When Jesus picks us up, when our Lord tells us that we are to eat spiritually, what are we to eat of? Let's start reading more of your Bible. Get to know more about this Savior of yours. Start reading more about the saints, those heroes of our faith who have triumphed and are now victorious in heaven. Read more about what our Catholic faith actually teaches. Pick up the catechism. But here's something else to consider. You can eat, spiritually speaking, and be fed very well by the holy people in your lives who love and care for you. God can feed you through them. Let's go back to our gospel for a second. How did the little girl eat after Jesus had her arise from her bed and after she had gotten some physical food? What did she have, spiritually speaking, to eat? Well, what did the daughter see in her father? She did not see him in the same way anymore. What did she see? The little girl saw the father's love. She saw her dad's loving concern, and she would soon come to find out he had gone searching desperately for Jesus. Second, she would soon come to see the faith that her father had put into our Lord even when it seemed to be a hopeless situation. But finally, the daughter saw something else in her father, which would prove to be some great spiritual food. She saw how amazed he was in what our Lord had done. Our children, our families, our friends, basically anyone in our lives, need to see our love. They need to see our faith. And they need to see how we can praise God for the mighty works that he's done for us. We do not know how long this little girl lived. But we can imagine that hardly a day went by without this young woman thinking to herself, I am alive today because of my father. My father loved me enough to put his reputation on the line. My father put his faith in the power of Jesus to heal even when I was already dead. My father worshipped God in amazement for the rest of his life. But to put that another way, from the perspective of Jairus, the father, my daughter is alive today 
I am alive today because I let go of my grip on her and placed her and myself into the mighty hands of a loving, saving God.